Deliver us from evil
grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise.
and we give all praise to our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take, please be seated. Let us direct our hearts and minds to our Lord in prayer. And as we do so, Deacon Yonggu Chang will lead us. Our Father in heaven, I stand in front of Lord and pray in this place. First, today is the 43 foundation anniversary in our Myeongsung church. So he only knows, only knows by Saman Kim Pastor. Thank you to give us Lord all and fire this all. In order hid all, it alive. Give us Lord it to ignite our darkness. Bless our pastor Hanakim and humble pastor. Humble pastor. He want to positive way for our God. He always to speak. I am blessed. I am plus support. Plus I am victorious and not victim. I am it. I am personal for English worship. I am honored then. I am used by the priests in the world. I am in power and able. This is our sort of come to, want to come to in, in this was was this this day there was a message by Hampesto by Nisibo or Grace or Coding of to this sermon. Then Evangelist Paul, our own able, he wanted to be happy together and Jesus and Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 7, verses 21 to chapter 8, verse 8. It's Romans chapter 7, verses 21 to chapter 8, verse 8. Deacon Hong Hyun Park and Konsan Im Myung Sun Im will read this passage for us. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and make me a prisoner of the law of sin at work with me. What a wretched man I am. Who is rescue me from this body that is subject to this? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law, but in my, my simple nature, a slave to the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because the through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For, uh, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, cut it by sending his one son in the likeness of sin, a simple flesh to be a sin offering. And so uh, he condemned the sin in the flesh. In order that the lightest requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those, Those who, who are, are in the, the realm of the, of the flesh cannot please God. God. Amen. Amen. This is word of God. 
Well, happy anniversary. Happy, happy anniversary. Today's 43rd anniversary of our Myeongseong Church. Uh, there will be a special service this evening at 7 in the main hall. So, well, it will be um, in Korean. And if you can, do join, and it will be a wonderful celebration and service and glory to our God today. If you are new here today, uh, we give a very warm welcome. Uh, you are very, very welcome here. It's our prayer that you may come to know Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, and taste, see and taste how good he is for you. And let's continue to pray for those who are affected by illnesses and for their full recovery. If you would like to volunteer for scripture reading or prayer or serve in the choir or at the back, please speak to one of our volunteers in the lobby. We're pleased to announce Deacon Chosa Kim has been appointed to serve as the head of cell groups. So he's the man to go to if you have any questions about cell groups. And next Sunday, right after the service, there'll be a meeting um, of cell group leaders. So bear that in mind, write that in your diary. This Saturday is the first vacation Bible study for our education department. So please, please pray that God would bless them and pray for safety and for grace for our children. And now it's time for choral praise. Shoshana Choir will offer a song entitled, I Am.
wonderful praise to uh, the great I am. God has no beginning or end. He is eternal. He is worthy of all praise. Um, yes, as you can see, the choir is a bit overpopulated, and this is um, loosely populated here. And it's my prayer that this area will be more populated as we go along. Um, how are you guys today? Fine. <laughs> okay. It's, it's pouring down out there, isn't it? Like torrential rain. And we don't have this rain every day, but this is much needed rain, so we give thanks to our Lord. But today, I want to talk to you about dead to sin and alive to God. Shall we say this together? Dead to sin. Dead to sin. Alive, to God. alive to God. Now imagine that is a scale here, a bit of kind of ladder from 0 to 100 in this room. And that scale indicates how good a person is. So somebody like um, Pastor Yang Wan Son, Son Yang Wan Moksanim, or Mother Teresa would probably somewhere up there. And people like Adolf Hitler or Pol Pot would be somewhere down there. So let me ask you, if you were to rate yourself, where would you place yourself on that scale? In the middle? High? Low? <laughs> well, the funny thing is that many people put themselves somewhere up there. Sometimes even higher than Mother Teresa. Unbelievable, I know. Such people might say, I have been nice to people. I have made donations to charities. I try not to hurt people. And I haven't committed any crime. I stick to the speed limit on the road. And I didn't cheat anybody. And certainly I didn't kill anybody. Such people may be good citizens in this world, but would they be good citizens in heaven? We have this little scale by which to measure ourselves, but God has a different scale. And the top part of that scale is not this ceiling. It's the sky. So there are people who feel that they are not quite up to his standard. Paul speaks for many people when he said this. It's Romans 7, 21 to 23. Oh, by the way, we'll be uh, reading together lots of scriptural verses together today. So let's read this one together. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am who will rescue me from this body of death. Now, people who don't know Jesus might also say this. They might also say the same thing. Because they have a conscience, conscience. But people's conscience is a very dim light. Even with candlelight, we can see something. But with sunlight, we can see everything. And the nearer you get to the sun, the more you are exposed to his light. So likewise, the nearer you go to Jesus, the more your disguises, your masks are penetrated, and he makes you more transparent. He exposes what kind of person you really are. And that's one of the reasons why people don't like him. They have a natural repul repulsion against him. John chapter 3, verses 19 to 20, let's read this together. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. 
But at the same time, the nearer you get to the sun, the more you are exposed to its heat. So the nearer you go to Jesus, the more you are exposed to his warmth, to his love. So when we go to Jesus, who was crucified for us, we see his light and feel his warmth. Now, Romans 8, 1, 2, 3. Yes, let's read this together again. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man. Jesus became like us in his humanity, and he was made a sin offering. By his death, he condemned sin that's in us. He pronounced judgment on it, and that judgment was decisive and final. But why do we sometimes feel guilty? And why do we still struggle with sin? Why do we sometimes feel condemned? It's because of our mortal body, our inner self, is made alive when we believe in Jesus, but our body is not yet made alive. It's still affected, still influenced by the power of sin. But that doesn't mean that what Jesus did on the cross is not valid. Romans 6, verse 8 to 11, this is an important verse. Let's read together. Now, if we died with Christ... We believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, this last sentence is very important. Count yourselves dead to sin. Shall we say this again? Count yourself dead to sin. What does this mean? Well, it means that even Christians don't feel that they are dead to sin. In fact, under the light of Jesus, they are more acutely aware of their sins. But Paul knows this because that's his experience as well. But what Jesus did on the cross is done once for all. It's not going to be repeated. It doesn't have to be repeated. His death on the cross 2,000 years ago is sufficient for all people, past, present, and future. So even when we feel our sinful nature is very much alive, we ought to count ourselves dead to sin. That's the statement of faith, and it's rooted in our spiritual reality. So when you feel condemned, when you feel guilty, when you are afraid of being exposed Look to Jesus Christ, who was cross crucified for you. His death on the cross is valid for all people in all places, in all times. But we can't just look at him once. We must look to him continually. We must start from there. Every time your conscience condemns you, we uh, look to Jesus. Whenever you feel inadequate, look to Jesus. Whoever looks down on you, look to Jesus. Now, which past are you holding on to? Your prideful past? Your hurtful past? Or the cross of Jesus? The cross of Christ is not only the past history, but it's also the present power that saves us. Amen. 
And we need to face the despair in us. Paul said, what a wretched man I am. That cry of despair can be the beginning of salvation. Today, one of the huge problems is the loss of fear, the fear of God. People are not afraid to commit sin. They have become insensitive. They don't take it seriously. That's spiritual leprosy. Pain is a system that protects our body. It warns us when there is a problem. Likewise, fear of God is a spiritual system of protection. When we mature in our faith in Jesus, we ought to be more fearful of God even as we rejoice in his love. But some Christians have become cheeky. They are not afraid of committing sin. When Peter proclaimed that he would never leave Jesus, he really meant it. But his words were not trustworthy because he didn't know how weak he was. Think about what Jesus had to do to save us from our plight. His incarnation, his coming to earth, his becoming like us, and his cross, his death on the cross, they all highlight the seriousness of our predicament and our inability to cope with it. Have we forgot how to, how to lament? Peter wailed when he noticed his shortcomings. He came to see how hopelessly weak he was. Like Peter and the first disciples, our first reaction is to run from the cross. But the crucified Jesus constantly draws us back to himself. These two separate reactions are well captured in what he says about his coming death. John chapter 12, verses 31-32. Let's read together. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. The love that flows from the crucified Jesus attracts us to him again and again and calls us not to run away. He shows us that only by what he has done on the cross can our deepest needs be met. Now the sharpness, the pain of the judgment that repels us is only the sharpness of the surgeon's knife. God's aim is our healing and our renewal. He wants to give us life that is completely different from anything we have known in this world. People at the time of the apostles, so about 2,000 years ago, they were not ashamed of those gods in Roman myth, like Jupiter, Zeus, who turned themselves into animals or lifeless gold to gratify their beastly desires. They didn't blush with shame when they heard the story. But they thought we should be ashamed of Jesus becoming a human being and crucified to save humanity. For them, the cross is shocking. Even today, believing in Jesus has become increasingly unpopular, especially in developed countries. And some Christians are hesitant to say they are believers in Jesus. But for those who believe, the cross of Christ is the power of God for salvation. Amen? Romans 8, five, verses 5 to 6. Let's read together. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Amen. Though our body is yet to be saved, 
is nevertheless the temple of God. You are bought with the price, with the precious blood of Jesus. Jesus owns you, and you belong to Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20, let's read together. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Amen. Just as we clean our homes, the, we, the temple of God, need cleaning as well. Jesus' work of salvation is complete, but our salvation is not yet complete. So there can be unclean things in us, and even demons can operate in our lives. But remember, they are illegal in your place. They don't have a passport. They didn't get the visa. Don't compromise with that which you are called and empowered to conquer. They have no right to be in your life. Resist them. Command them to leave in the name of Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 6, God has given us weapons for spiritual warfare. Among the weapons, there is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And what's the sword for? Cooking? Chop, chop, chop? No, it's for attack. The Word of God is a very, very powerful weapon. So read the Bible daily, meditate on it, think about it, memorize it. That is a habit that we must have to survive and to thrive. Now, the purpose of our life is not happiness, but holiness. Whatever we do, whether we work, whether we study, whether we get married, we should aim for holiness. Without holiness, there is no happiness. Happiness follows holiness. And it's, God's, it's not God's intention to overwhelm us and make us into ashes. He intends to make us shine just as Jesus shined when he came to us. Jesus doesn't cleanse tombs, by the way. He cleanses his temple. He gives resurrection life to the dead. But once you are made alive by the power of the Spirit, you become his temple. And the temple needs cleaning from time to time. When Cain murdered his brother Abel, God said to him, Genesis 4, 7, let's read together. If you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. But how can we master sin? By trusting in the crucified Jesus. Now, even as we cry, what a wretched man I am, we also have the Holy Spirit living in us. Amen. Finally, let's read Romans 8, 11. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. Amen. That's the promise we have. That's the power we can rely on. And that's the way we are called to walk. Remember, in Jesus Christ, you are dead to sin and alive to God. Let's pray. Lord, You have called us, you have come to us as light, and we are exposed and then cleansed and then embraced by your love, and we are so grateful for your grace. Lord, help us to remember that even 
though we feel weak, even though we feel tempted, even though we fall from time to time, that in you, that we are dead to sin and alive to God. And help us to remember that truth and help us to proclaim that truth and help us to live by that truth. Thank you for sending us Holy Spirit. We believe that your spirit is within us. Empower us, strengthen us, fill us so that we may walk in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's pray over this offering. Heavenly Father, you are God of the universe. You rule everything. You are sovereign even over every corner of this world. We give you thanks and praise for who you are and what you've done for us. We offer this as a small token of our appreciation of your grace and love. Bless it and use it for your name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone again for joining us to worship together. We are blessed to have all of you here with us. We have two visitors today, uh, Mr. Petra Harianto, all the way from Indonesia, right? And Deacon Jong Song Hee. Would you um, stand wherever you are? God bless you. We we'll welcome you very warmly. And we are very grateful for our Taylor praised him as always for the beautiful song. I'm sure God is glorified whenever they sing. And also to our Shoshana Choir for their wonderful praise as well. And thanks are also due to our volunteers who prayed and read scripture for us today and those who are serving at the back. Shall we bless them and give thanks to our Lord for them? And as another reminder, if you haven't done so yet, please sign up for prayer relay.
God has called us to pray. Prayer is very, very important. So please remember to join us. Now let us all stand together and let's greet one another by saying, You are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. Jesus owns you. Jesus owns you. Our final song is Made Me Glad. Let's sing together.
us pray together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with God's people here, the families, Myeongsang Church, and our nations now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.